You've probably heard of CETA, TTIP, the Mercosur deal, as the debate over these free trade agreements, or FTAs, has grown over the past years. In this video, I'll be talking about FTAs and what makes EU foodstuffs so crucial in trade negotiations. Well, food is particularly important in the context of these FTAs and when it comes to the EU's trade policy in general. Foodstuff could actually make a real difference between a deal and a failure in both trade negotiations and the long process coming after the FTA's ratification, which is the formal approval of the agreement. Here's one example. You know the alumi cheese, don't you? The Cypriot white gold delicious on the grill. Anyway, the Cypriot National Parliament last August refused to ratify the Canada-EU FTA, the CETA. And the reason? The treaty will not adequately protect alumi cheese. So an agreement that took five years of negotiations involving 28 countries, removing 98% of the pre-existing tariffs between the two parts, could be at risk of derailing because of that delicious slice of grilled alumi. Is it worth it? I'm quite hungry at the moment, so I shall not answer the question. Speaking of FTAs, there are, of course, different types of trade blocks, depending on how much the trade partners are integrated. Starting from the simplest form, namely simple partnership and cooperation agreements, which provide a general framework for bilateral economic relations, but leave it custom tariffs as they are. Then you go up to association agreements and free trade agreements with which you remove or reduce customs tariffs in bilateral trade. And then you have customs unions, which are free trade areas plus a common external tariff. And at the top, you finally have single markets. For instance, the European Union is a single market, which is one of the deepest forms of trade integration. It also involves the free movement of goods, services, capitals and labor. Here's a quick overview. As of 2020, there are 36 main preferential trade agreements negotiated by the Commission and approved in the different EU countries. The latest to enter into force was the one with Vietnam this summer. But the EU has also an FTA with South Korea, which was a role model for other agreements for quite a while. Other remarkable deals are the ones with Singapore, enforced since 2019, and the famous CETA with Canada, which is provisionally applied since 2017. There are also five new agreements currently being negotiated, uh, the one with Australia, uh, the one with China, which is actually an investment agreement, uh, Indonesia, New Zealand and the Philippines. And there are several others in pending, meaning that the negotiations are over and a political deal has been struck, but it requires to be ratified by member states. The most famous case is the association agreement with the economic and political bloc Mercosur, which is made up of Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, Venezuela, who currently suspended its membership, and Bolivia. But there are also pending deals with uh, different West Africa countries, East African community and the Caribbean countries. How big is the EU trade in agriculture and food products? Quite big. In the first 10 months of 2020, the EU27 agri-food trade, so exports plus imports, reached a value of 153 billion of euro. This boom is quite recent. I mean, historically, the EU has been a bit defensive in agriculture, but over the last 10 years, something has changed. There were reforms of the common agricultural policy that made farmers more market-oriented, but also global population growth increased the demand for food and consumer preference for EU quality products. And also, several FTAs have been concluded. The EU is now the world's biggest agriculture exporter and importer and have a big trade surplus of almost 50 billion euro. 
10 years ago, the EU countries were exporting about 7% of what was produced. Now that's doubled. And one in seven jobs in the EU depends also on experts. So the more farmers are competitive, the more are not afraid to place their products in the global markets. But of course, trading agricultural staff could bring some problems and raise concerns. For instance, there is also a growing awareness of environmental issues such as climate change or global plastic contamination. With its recently unveiled flagship food policy, the Farm to Fork strategy, the European Commission is committed to make the European food system a global standard for sustainability. So the strategy aims to promote shorter supply chains, which is something that might go against the very concept of trade areas, which relies on global supply chains. This environmental element is a biggie, with the upcoming talks on uh, the Mercosur Agreement, which after 20 years of negotiations has still yet to be ratified. Several elements are also taken into account during negotiations, like protection of EU's geographical indications in third countries, food safety and quality, but also a sort of level playing field between EU farmers and third country farmers. Because European farmers can feel that there is an unfair competition when the EU imports food which has been produced with lower uh, animal welfare, labour and environmental standards. But the topic is so big that we should do another video explainer on that. <laughs>